Leipzig. Uh, for those who are far away, Leipzig is a city in uh, the middle of Germany, half a million people there, one hour south of Berlin. Uh, it's the city of uh, Johann Sebastian Bach and Nietzsche and uh, Richard Wagner and a lot of other famous people from culture and science and also the place where the revolution of 1989 started. So my university is um, a colorful mixture of uh, different universities that were put together after the German reunification. Um, most important for me is the Leipzig Technical University. So um, what we do, uh, we have a couple of profile lines here. So uh, engineering is one of them. Um, so what I do is also, um, yeah, one of the key research fields of my university. Um, Leipzig is also a place where a lot of other um, um, research institutions and uh, companies are situated. Uh, for me as a composite engineer, uh, especially important is BMW. So in our city, the um, BMW i-series uh, was produced a couple of years back. So, uh, okay, enough of that. Um, now to my talk, um, lightweight engineering versus climate uh, efficient economy. So this year is a picture, I think it was uh, published 2015 or 16 uh, from Ramsdorf in Nature and it shows um, the CO2 emissions per year and the forecast into the future how, uh, depending on different scenarios how many CO2 the world together uh, is um, allowed to uh, emit in order to meet the agreements of the Paris Climate Protection Agreement. So, um, and this uh, forecast basically means that we uh, that there's a maximum somewhere in the nearer future, and after that, we have to reduce our uh, CO2 emission, not to a certain value, but to zero. So, and um, uh, I ask myself okay, uh, I'm a material scientist and uh, is there a possible contribution from my side to that um, issue? Uh, when I was younger um, and people to uh, taught me about lightweight engineering, I learned that lightweight engineering um, or composite engineering is more or less something economic. Nobody uses composites just for fun. Uh, but uh, because it has an economic benefit. And uh, later on, especially in Europe and in Germany, Industry 4.0 uh, came on also with um, an economic background. Um, but that was a situation maybe 10 years back and nobody talked about ecolog ecologic principles. Uh, later on, uh, something like life cycle, life cycle assessment came up uh, but the idea to um, uh, centralize the ecolog uh, ecolo ecology uh, of materials is, does not exist so far. Uh, and I actually, I don't have a phrase for that. I call it design to climate. You can also put something else in there. Um, but from my point of view, that is what um, results from uh, the slide that I've shown before. Yeah? So uh, we have to do something in a very short period, uh, 2030 to 2050, depending on the scenario. So 10 to 30 years from now on, uh, that is our time frame. And well, it's a time frame for a scientist, 10 to 30 years, that is, sounds quite decent. Um, so uh, that is the scenario of my talk. And what I would like to do next is I sh want to show some, some examples um, from my research uh, contributing to that field. Uh, maybe uh, due to time trouble, I only make three or four examples, but let's start. So the, the first example is from civil engineering. And it's about the development of a material called carbon concrete 
composites. So what is this carbon concrete composites? Uh, the basic idea is to re, uh, replace uh, steel reinforcement uh, with carbon fiber reinforcement uh, to strengthen a um, uh, concrete part. Uh, you can see some of the concrete parts here and how the um, reinforcement um, uh, is integrated into that structure. And finally, we ha you have a product uh, that looks pretty much like a standard concrete product. So um, next question is, why should I use such a material? What we know is that uh, steel uh, tends to corrode uh, you can see that here in, in those pictures. Uh, that's why every um, steel reinforced uh, concrete building has a lot of concrete uh, uh, as a cover to protect the uh, steel from reinforcing. And if you use uh, carbon fibers instead of steel, um, you can reduce that cover. So uh, those two pictures here show pretty easy uh, that you save a lot of material uh, just by that replacement. And when you um, keep in mind that uh, the CO2 emission of the cement industry is uh, about uh, three times higher than the whole aerospace industry in the world, uh, here are the uh, particular values, then you might see that this is a a uh, pretty decent approach uh, also to save CO2. Uh, so what I did in um, that context is um, I developed together with my group a, a technology to produce uh, carbon fiber reinforced reinforcements uh, by Paltrusion technology um, that has been published uh, two years back. So that is um, a process that uses uh, thermoplastic materials and uh, perspectively also carbon fiber, carbon fibers made of uh, renewable resources. Um, here on the left hand side, you can see some of the developments uh, that we um, have developed. So uh, depending on the um, modification of the paltrusion process, you might be able to um, uh, manufacture different types of geometries uh, that also um, guarantees that uh, uh, the carbon fibers are not destroyed, um, um, and which increases the mechanical properties of the final, um, final uh, paltruded composite. Um, this video here shows um, the inner structure of um, the geometry of this uh, helix protrusion, uh, protruded rebars. Um, at the moment, um, we are in a situation that uh, some examples uh, for the application already exist. Most of the older examples uh, they have the idea to strengthen existing, uh, existing buildings. So uh, one is the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin, you may have noted. Uh, when you take it, those pictures, uh, look at, at those pictures here, they are over the years, a lot of cracks uh, appeared in the structure uh, and those um, outer structure was um, strengthened by a thin layer of that um, carbon concrete composite material. Um, that example is um, not very relevant in terms of um, uh, economics. Uh, more relevant is uh, the strengthening of uh, infrastructure, for instance, bridges. Uh, you can see uh, one example here in, in, in those uh, pictures. Um, the basic idea is more or less the same. You have an existing structure which is damaged and you reinforce the structure additionally by that material. Uh, the tricky point is uh, to build uh, new structures uh, of that material and that is um, currently under, uh, under process. So in, at the TU Dresden, uh, the first worldwide building uh, which is fully made of uh, 
carbon concrete composite is uh, built at the moment. Um, so the technology is on the edge of commercialization. So uh, companies like Stora Enzo, they are producing carbon fibers uh, out of lignin with um, pretty decent uh, mechanical properties. And um, the technology that we developed uh, for producing those rebars, um, they are, uh, uh, the technology has been taken by uh, ThyssenKrupp Carbon Components, a, a spin-off of uh, ThyssenKrupp to commercialize also that technology. So that uh, is uh, my first example. So my second, um, oh, uh, but of course, um, uh, when I speak of emission, then, I mean, you would probably agree uh, to say, okay, to produce such a material uh, is not free of emission. So uh, th this um, this path uh, this, that has been taken um, has to be continued. And um, uh, one idea that is um, will be handled in a Horizon 2020 project starting from uh, next year, uh, is uh, to produce uh, composite materials uh, out of that um, carbon concrete composite materials with um, inner sandwich core made of uh, cellular lightweight concrete uh, and uh, the pores of that materials uh, are predestinated uh, for for instance uh, keeping aerogales um, inside uh, and then this um, composite will have kind of multifunctional uh, applicability uh, in order to guarantee that it um, also uh, temperature can be saved and um, the emission of the whole building uh, will be reduced over the lifetime. Uh, okay, uh, my second example is from automotive industry. So. Uh, Electromobility has been the trend in automobility uh, over the last decade. Uh, everybody knows uh, about that. Uh, and um, what we also know is that um, one major drawbacks of the uh, technology is uh, that the usual uh, lithium iron batteries uh, are pretty heavy, uh, which means that a car uh, has to be as light as possible in order to increase uh, just uh, the range of the car, yeah, which is a major, um, yeah, the major um, issue when you as a customer uh, want to buy such a car. So the car has to be light, uh, and that's why uh, the automotive industry in the last couple of years has uh, done a lot of efforts. Uh, to produce lightweight uh, vehicles. Um, and I was involved in uh, a development uh, where thermoplastic uh, composites um, are investigated uh, for the automotive industry. There have been a lot of publications in the field of um, glass fiber reinforced um, thermoplastics. Also the, also the development of the textile structure we investigated uh, several uh, so-called uh, weft knitted composites. Um, those pictures here show that also when you want to produce um, complex uh, three-dimensional uh, shapes that uh, such uh, composites are very, uh, have very good draping um, um, prob uh, uh, properties uh, and also the crash and impact properties of such a materials are significantly higher than uh, other composites because the uh, inner structure of the composites is kind of three-dimensional. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, investigations on that field that has been published almost 10 years back uh, that um, yeah, the uh, crash properties of um, uh, such novel textiles are higher than conventional uh, woven composites or non-crimped fabrics. Uh, the project ended uh, in 2016 where uh, we produced 
uh, this whole car here completely out of um, that material, so uh, glass fiber reinforced thermoplastics. Th that was only a show car um, out of a um, more fundamental oriented research project. A uh, couple of years later, we produced together with uh, ThyssenKrupp uh, that car here. And, uh, this car is called uh, In Eco. Um, the mass of that car is below 900 kilogram. Uh, just for comparison, BMW i3, um, which has approximately the same size, uh, is almost uh, 400 kilograms heavier. So what we showed is uh, that uh, this uh, way of uh, producing extremely lightweight cars uh, is not at the end. Uh, there are several uh, open uh, ends also for the industry. Um, commercialization at the moment is that a, a company like Porsche, uh, they now produce uh, such um, um, composites uh, which they call the 3D hybrid technology. So where they use that material, so that thermoplastic composite uh, together with uh, steel uh, in those B-pillar systems here that you can see here in the car. Um, uh, this composite also has the potential uh, of integrating bio-based composites. Uh, that has been shown recently, but um, uh, those composites are not in the series uh, at Porsche at the moment, but uh, it has been proven that it's possible to use them as well. Okay, uh, my third and probably final example, if I take a look on the clock, uh, is the idea uh, to develop uh, multifunctional composites also for electromobility. So this picture that you can see on that slide here is uh, also uh, uh, distributed by Airbus many times. It says that uh, one kilogram of weight saving in the airplane saves 500 kilograms CO2 per year, uh, which um, is a lot of more important than just using uh, bio-based materials with uh, lower properties than conventional materials. Uh, the question now is, how can you do that? And uh, one idea is to develop so-called structural batteries. So what is this a structural battery? A structural battery is a, a material or a composite system which is able uh, to act as a battery, so, um, and has also uh, structural properties. Uh, so in the classical scenario, it uh, looks like that. You take a composite and uh, if there's space, you put a battery inside. Yeah? So you have the weight is composite plus battery. Uh, and the idea is now, is it possible somehow to integrate the battery into the composite? That is a structural battery. And uh, there are several ideas um, published in science, a group in Sweden um, that works with, together with Volvo. They are uh, investigating that for the uh, automotive industry. So they uh, play with uh, layup of materials and also with uh, interlayers and stuff like that. Uh, our approach is to um, produce porous carbon fibers. So uh, those, this picture here shows a porous carbon fiber that uh, we have developed. It's uh, patented this year. Um, and when you produce such a, a porous fiber, then you are able to uh, use this um, material as an electrode uh, in lithium sulfur batteries. So that is what we do. Um, we have developed a, a carbon fiber line at um, the RCCF. Um, uh, Mr. Tivari uh, told us in the beginning, RCCF means Research Center Carbon Fibers, uh, Saxony. Uh, this facility contains a stabilization line and a carbonization line. Um, at the moment, we are playing with uh, several materials where we uh, integrate 
<coughs> lignin sulfonate or uh, also acetylated lignin into uh, polyacrylonitrile blends with uh, different weight percentages uh, and um, measure the porosity or the porosity increase of the um, uh, of the carbon fibers some of the uh, those fibers you can see here and you can also see the porosity of those fibers. Um, those fibers will be used uh, as I said uh, to produce uh, such a new type of battery so that uh, is some ongoing research at the moment. And the final part of my talk I have to skip maybe I shortly uh, emphasize that um, I also have the opinion that on the modeling side and um, uh, there's a lot to do uh, uh, for CO2 saving uh, just with the idea that uh, if you are able to model structures and you to show that the lifetime of um, structures can be increased that is also strong and powerful um, tool to save a lot of uh, CO2 uh, during the structural lifetime. And um, such an approach, um, of course, requires uh, improved models. Um, what I wanted to show is that I have developed um, uh, a lot of models for predicting the um, failure behavior of uh, such composites. They have been published uh, over the years, also for crash applications. Uh, those models have been validated by uh, types of experiments. Um, nowadays, uh, those models are able uh, to predict a lot of uh, also industrial relevant uh, examples. The, this example here is an example together with a Porsche. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so and um, to summarize uh, my talk, um, I know that uh, uh, myself as a composite engineer cannot do very much uh, to save CO2 uh, uh, with my work, but uh, I mean, maybe a small portion uh, of those ideas can be used also in the nearer future. Uh, I feel that uh, in, in the future there must be concentrated work on the field of producing high performance materials um, just with a lower CO2 footprint. Uh, I've shown some examples uh, about that. Uh, also the aspect of multifunctional of multifunctional applications is important in that field uh, from my point of view. So finally uh, I would like to also thank, thank all my co-workers, the PhDs my PhD students of the, the last couple of years and also the funding bodies of the uh, projects uh, that I've shown here.